not to speak on family idols. Turn with me quickly to Exodus. Exodus 20, 3 to 5. You shall not have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself any carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth or that is in the water under the earth. Verse 5. You shall not bow down to them or serve them. For I, the Lord your God, I am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. If you are a student of history, you will agree with me that idol worship was deeply worshipped by our forefathers. It was a traditional practice that any family that does not have an idol was not considered a family. Our forefathers were deeply rooted in idol worshiping because that was the only option they had. And by so doing, they mortgaged generations unborn. Lives unborn were dedicated to idols. What is an idol? An idol is an object of worship. An idol is anything that takes the place of God. An idol is the presence of darkness in that family. An idol is anything that takes control over you in the name of protecting you. That is an idol. And there were so many idols in the days of our forefathers that represented God in that time. And permit me to say that the act of idol worshiping handed over our lives the three deities that are in control of our lives today. Most of the things we do are things that the idols of our father's house lead us to do. You must understand what an idol really is to overcome the idol. Now, this is how an idol looks like. And this was a common practice at a time in our time and in our generation. If you go to countries like Asia and Latin America, there's a market to buy idols to this day. Idol worship was not only for those days. It is still being practiced today. And God has said, I, the Lord, hate idols. If you look at the Ten Commandments, you'll discover that the first one was, Thou shalt have no other God before me. So what happens? All the families on earth are guilty of that number one command and instruction. This is an idol. And I present this idol this is only an illustration. This is how an idol looks like. They use the white rubber, but it does not stand for purity. It stands for blood. This rubber that is white now will one day turn brown and then one day turn red. So the moment they carry it, for us it stands for purity. But for them, it stands for blood stain. Yes, how this clean thing will actually become dirty and be stained with blood. So, this is an altar. By the way, every altar has a name. And I call it Quali. Her face is there. And I come every day and I say, Quali, I liberate on the ground. And I said, Good morning. Please, let my children, let my wife, let my family, be covered under you. This is an altar. This person here is the spirit of the altar. The moment you bring this, you have invited the spirit. 
So this spirit will come and possess the altar. So it is no longer about the idol. It is now the spirit that has taken over the idol as a house. They like wickedness. So a spirit of wickedness will come and take over this idol. And when that spirit does, it's no longer about the idol. It is now about the spirit. It is the spirit that goes and fulfills the assignment that this idol has to carry out. This idol cannot talk. This idol cannot move. But the spirit that has occupied it can move. The spirit can see. The spirit can go and do anything. So, and this is the spirit. And the moment you are libating, you have considered this one a God. And not the almighty God. So when you make the libation and you do it, there's one thing you must understand. He said the spirit will eventually kill me. Who is serving it? No, that is a hidden truth about idol worship. This same spirit that I am worshiping will eventually lead to my death. That is the spiritual wickedness in high places. So, I worship it for a time. For a time. This spirit one day, I make one mistake. Just one. It doesn't have to be two. Just one. Somebody say just one. one. And this one, who has been wanting to kill me, he's faithful. Eventually what? Kills me. I brought him on. And having brought him, he eventually kills me. Now, let's say, Brother Prayer becomes my son. And Brother Prayer says, This Juju has killed his father. So he will not worship the Juju. That the Juju did not give his father any pain. I am no longer in the picture. And this Juju now, that I feed every day, that I kill chicken for every day, that I do everything for every day, that I worship every day, now begins to wait for my next of kin to serve him. And my next of kin decides not to serve the juju. What do you think the juju will do to my next of kin? If you read the scripture, God is the only merciful God. It's the only merciful God. Now, this shrine had killed me. And my son knew that this juju has killed me. Because while I was dying, I kept calling the juju. I kept shouting. I was seeing the spirit of the juju. Now he said, no, after my burial, I will not do what? I will not serve this uh, juju. And the juju waits for one month. Waits for two months. Waits for three months. He's not serving. This one becomes his enemy after me. And he begins to spoil things for this one. Life begins to be very difficult. And when he still waits for some time, he's not serving. He starts becoming sick. When he still waits, before he know it, someone around him will become what? Mad. And another person will have an accident caused by this same church. This spirit. Now what you see is this one. Is it not so? Very good. And then finally, he does what? He makes this one become amputated. And then they cut his leg. He has made him useless. This is now his son. Come. The son to this one. One idol causing the work of total destruction in one family. And then this one now comes and now said, I that he barely knows died. His own father too had died. There is no need for this word, for this juju. So he scatters the juju. Now he does not have the power to destroy the shrine. But out of anger, he goes ahead and does what? Destroy the shrine. And four days after, the spirit of the idol rises up to do what? To kill the shrine. So, this one died with a protruded tongue out of the wickedness of what? The juju. By that time, this one already have two sons. And that son now became brother prayer. This one eventually come. And now he said he is what? He goes to church. 
Hello? Because this one had died, this one had died, and now he is what? He says he now goes to church. But he does not know his history. Now he doesn't know what killed this one. What killed this one? Now he now goes to what? Church. And becomes a casual Christian. I know the worst mistake. He now has a little money. Because this spirit is looking for a way to rob him. He now has a little money. He now comes to where this altar is. This evil juju. Where this one scattered. Because he doesn't know the history. He now comes here and build a house. Who owns the house? Him or this one? The juju has the house. This is how it works. You have to acquaint yourself with how it works. You cannot discharge and acquit yourself. You cannot claim it is over when you don't even know how it started. This one didn't tell this one the story. I did not. He just saw me. Sometimes he will hold the bucket. He will hold the pan that I used to wash my hand. He knows I serve this idol. And then this one came. This one really didn't follow him. Because before he grew up, this one was already angry that this idol has killed me. So he is ignorant of the story. And this one came from nowhere. Already this one did not meet the idol. Why? He has scattered what? The idol. Knowing that what killed me and this is from the idol. So he doesn't want to hear. He decided to scatter the idol. This same spirit of the idol killed him. And this one came as he saw from nowhere. I said, all right. So he goes more than block. And the blood blocks him most. Stays for 12 years. Why? This one is saying, no house will be here. As long as this one is not serving me. Now, that time I was libating here, I have handed over all my generation to this idol. As I libate, the ground becomes the idol. As I libate, my unborn children becomes the idol's property. That is the secret our fathers never knew. Now, if they had the knowledge, then they would have known better. And a lot of them would have said no. This one does not die. It's a spirit. This one was on his own. I went to bring him. He was not looking for a house. I decided to give him a house. He was not looking for where to stay. I was the one that invited him. And now I am no more. This one is no more. This one who angrily killed didn't even stay. After four days, he killed this one. And this one came and said, I go to church. But he does not know the story. And so, he cannot destroy the story he doesn't know. So he goes to the church to pray. And as he prays, the Bible says, until you pray as touching it. You must pray as touching it. You must understand what you pray. So you know what? He comes and he decides to move block. And the block stays there. Begin. For what? For 12 years. And he does not know why. He cannot continue this house. Nor build on it. Why? He is laying a foundation. On what? On the place his great grandfather had handed over to the swine. If you must build a house. It's not enough to have money. Go and ask for the foundation. Find out if twins were buried there. Find out if that place was a burial ground. Find out if that place was a place where humans were slaughtered. Don't just buy a house. Something happened one day as we went for deliverance. Here in Token Village, the woman's complaint and her husband was, they'll go to talk, they'll go to work. But when they come back, that bed they arranged very well. Someone has scattered it. The husband is an engineer. The wife works in the bank. So they go to work very early. When they come back, the bed is squeezed. The kitchen is messed up. And because of that, they have sent us staying with them when they got married. So nobody is staying with us. How come this bed is always touched? 
jumping always sleep on this bed. And so they made an invitation. And we went there. When we got there, I asked them one question. Where is your landlord? And they said, they pointed at the house. And I said, we'll come back here in two days time. We will go. But go to your landlord and ask your landlord what was buried in this ground. You cannot walk here on earth with only your physical eyes. I don't need the physical eye to walk here. If you must prevail on earth, you must ask God to open your spiritual eye. Say, God, yeah. open my spiritual eyes. You are hearing that this idol has killed me. This idol has killed this one. This idol killed this one in four days. And now this one now says it's going to touch. So he falls into your category. Then wait to hear what happened to him. I'm already telling you that he's struggling to build. And you're starting chatting God like I'm whatever. This one came. And this one is still here. The spirit of the idol. Scatter the idol. Destroy the altar. It's still what? By the virtue of idol worship, this has become an altar. This is the idol. And this is the spirit behind the idol. If you clear this altar physically, this altar didn't just get here. There was a sacrifice that was done before this altar was placed here. Now this one came carelessly. Out of lack of knowledge. Because the Bible said my people are destroyed. For what? For lack of knowledge. Out of lack of knowledge. He came. He scattered. He has done his own. And this idol spirit came back. And destroyed him in four days. The son came. And as the son came. The son cried. He started going to church. The way became a little bit open. But he still does not know his story. And ignorance is a disease. And so he begins to ask, why can he not do what? Build. The first thing he accused is his wife. It's not since he got married. This one is the one manipulating it. To shift blames on the innocent wife. This one will begin to say, it's your uncle, it's your aunt. And then finally, it's your wife. And then this one begins to hate his wife. The moment he begins to hate his wife, that altar, that church he goes to, that was beginning to give him brightness. That brightness is closed. Why? Wrong accusation. Followed by the spirit of anger. Now begins to block his ways. And cover his path. Because this one has seen that he has started going to church. That I didn't go. That he didn't go. That he didn't go. This one begins to go. And he begins to pray. And changes begins to come. So, he will create room for an elemental problem. That will stand as a hindrance to him who is going to church. So, the next thing is he has a girlfriend. The one pushing him is this one. He has a girlfriend. Ignores his wife. Begin to accuse. Begin to beat. Begin to batter the wife. The problem is not the wife. The one behind the picture is this one. You are not following me. And this one cannot kill this one immediately. Because the Bible said, touch not my anointed. And do my problems, you know what? My prophet no harm. So what this one will do is to push this one into an error. Make mistakes. So that he can strike. So this one begins to, because this one has no right over this one. But he had right over me because I was loyal to him. He has right. He has right. But this one, he has no right. He has no right. Satan has no right over you. Amen. From today, Satan can defeat you. Amen. See, any man who steps in the church is not a joke. They become afraid. The only thing that is that this one does not know this one. But this one knows this one. So what happens? This one, he does not know this one. But this one knows even the generation that are not born. He knows the generation that is not yet born. He was built. He was invited. To know my generation. So every secret about my lineage, he already has them. So this man begins to go to church. And this one discover that a strange power has come. A strange power is here. 
You know what he does? He pushes this one because he can't kill him directly. This one has not done anything that will kill, make him die what? Directly. You know what he does? He pushes him to mistakes. He allows. So he helps him to break the edge. And even if it takes him 30 years to do it, this one can wait. Because this one does not die. So this one, you see as he stands, he's ready to stand here for 50 years. He's ready to stay. It's a spirit. So he does not do what? He doesn't die. He remains. And this one now, who is bringing the light? Because he has entered the church. He now begins to do what? He now begins to walk in the error. Somebody shout error. error. Somebody shout error. error. It is an error to walk in error. Hey. He now begins to walk in error. Because this one see him as somebody that can destroy him. So what here you are heading to destroy him? The idols of your father's house. Yeah. So what does he do? He comes and he pushes him. The first error. The second error. The third error. I know what God will be saying. I will use you. You are the weapon. You are the man that will save your family. That will deliver your family. Someone here, you are the man. Amen. Someone here, you are the woman. Amen. It's not over until it is over. Amen. I refuse to give up. I refuse to give up. My generation must come back. Hey. Jesus. Now listen, listen. This thing that has killed me, that has killed my next of king, that killed his own next of king, cannot directly kill him. Because somehow the God of mercy showed his face. The God of mercy. Is somebody here, you are approaching mercy. Your mercy has come. In the name of Jesus. So, he came. And for the first time in that family, this one is afraid for the first time in this new age, he was not afraid of me because I choose to serve him. He was not afraid of my nest of king because he refused to. How can you please them? You serve him, one mistake, you are gone. You refuse to serve him, he deals with you. This one decides to scatter it. He does what? He killed him immediately. This one can. And something in the room of the spirit say no. This is the weapon I will use. This is the weapon. I will use him. I will use him. I will use him. God will use you. And you know what he does? God who sits in heaven. He said no. He has killed him because he killed the man who brought him. This one used anger. Stop using anger. Don't use anger. Don't use anger. Anger does not solve a thing. Say, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anger does not solve a thing. Anger will not solve it. Out. He became angry. Wisdom is profitable of our what? Direction. So, he killed him. This one came with a more dangerous anger. Anger goeth before a fall. It is a weapon our family idols use. So when you are angry, don't allow the sun to set on your anger. Be wise in your anger. Forgive easily. What is forgiveness? To forgive is to overlook an offense and count the offender as not guilty. Don't hold strong to everything. A woman entered on one of the Wednesdays, days and from the door I said, go back. Your anger is too much. And she knelt down. And she said to me, that has been my problem from childhood. My anger has chased away three husbands. I have been involved in three marriages. One anger. Wherever there is a fierce anger, there is an idol that is still active. That has not been dealt with. So he rose unknowing to him. He didn't know what I have done. He didn't know what this has done. But he grew up to understand that the father was only sick for four days. And after four days, the father died. And so him, in an attempt not to die like his father, ran to the church. 
and the church became a living church. You must be in a living church. Locate yourself. Be, find yourself in a living church. Don't go there and add to the number. If the place where you worship cannot lead you forward, relocate. Somebody say relocate. It is not a crime. It is not a sin to relocate. Don't remain there and die. I want to say to somebody, deliverance must come. Amen. Deliverance must come. Amen. Now, even if you don't know, walk into it. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are the principalities. The spirit behind the idols. This spirit can live for another one million years. But causing havoc in only one particular family. So because of idol worship, all the families of the earth, or most of the families of the earth, has what we call family strong men. These are the family strong men. They don't die. Don't say you have over prayed. Don't say you prayed too much. They don't do what? Die. They remain. For as long as that family is not desolate. When the family is desolate and there is no body, what happens? They relocate. Hallelujah. For God be the glory. So this one decides to come. And this is the one God wants to use. And this one does not know that God wants to use him. And the first thing this one discovered is to raise weapons. To make sure this one makes mistakes. And the mistakes begins to slow down his progress. I am making illustrations. Don't forget them. One illustration can lead you for the rest of your life. So like this illustration, carry someone. Carry what? Carry someone. So he begins to make a mistake. The first mistake he made is to start having girlfriends. It is not his habit. It is not in their family. It is not part of their lives. But this is the one pushing him. Then from making what? From for having girlfriends. This one say no, it's not enough to pull him down. He start making him to lie. You are not following me. And so he begins to lie. And this one say no, it will take five error to pull him down. So he goes to the next word, error. What is the next error? One of those girls become pregnant for him. Is how many errors now? Three errors. That is still going to the church. So that thing begins to shed mercy. It begins to shed mercy. Begins to shed mercy. And God will say, my son, you are the pillar. You are the one I want to use. Stop walking in error. I can't use you with the error. I am a merciful God. I have chosen you. You are the hell of salvation of your family. If you fail, your family will fail. If you fail, this man, this spirit of this idol will take over. Please, my son, my mercy is upon you. But you must walk out your salvation with fear and with trembling. So this one, who is supposed to bring deliverance? This one that is the Moses of his family begins to walk in error. And then he pushes him to the fourth one. The fourth one is he's having a business transaction. And then he has to lie. He has to lie in that business because of one million. He has cheated others. And because of that, the, the mercy stops down. And God is waiting for him to rise up again. God is waiting for him to rise up. God is waiting for someone to rise up. Amen. God is waiting for someone to rise up. Amen. And you will rise. You know what the Bible said? There is no time. It's already eight. He said, for my mercy would appear for a, for a thousand years. From today, you will not make mistakes. Amen. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Lift up your hands and say, my Father, my Father. I must complete my journey. I must complete my journey. I must complete my journey. I can't hear you. 
Now that is what they do. They stop your journey. You see that the eye, the spirit of the idol stopped my journey. He stopped my next of king. He stopped my the next of king of that one and of that one. They stop journey. They stop destinies. But it will not continue to be so. Yes. Say, so my father's idol. It is time to leave. I receive power to destroy you. It is my generation that will destroy you. Therefore, every idol of my father's house be summoned in the name of Jesus. The idol that wants to eat you like others shall die before you. The idol that said you will not stand and you will not prosper. You see that idol? That idol, we are already digging their graves. They shall be buried. They shall be buried. They shall be buried. 